I'd like to show you a game that I played a while back. It was played in the Icelandic league, I had the black pieces, and I like this game because, well, not only is it a nice attacking game, a short game, a miniature, but it also features two patterns that we've learned here on this channel. So let's have a look. Especially one of them really helped me win this game. So I had black. Uh, this was played around 2003, 2004. While rating at the time, 2255. My opponent, 2159. I was on my way to become a theater master at the time. My opponent played e4. As he always does, I think he still does. I played the French. And he played d3. He wants to play some King's Indian attack. I played d5. And I've been usually playing this line here, knight c6 against this. Uh, and if you go g3, I take and go bishop c5. I like that line. But he went e5. Knight d7, d4. So now actually we have a position where I want to move compared to a line in the Taras because white took two moves to play d3 and then d4. The line I'm talking about, if you go back, if white goes d4 immediately, d5, knight d2. Knight c6, the Guimard variation. We will get the same position after e5, knight d7, except now it's white's move. In the game that we're playing right now, or looking over, it's my move after t4. And the difference there, well, it's tremendous. Now I can play f6 and attack the center. So pressure on e5, which looks like it has to resolve, but bishop e5 is also a possibility. But in the game, it took an f6, which I think. Yeah, gives black kind of the initiative, because now I take, I'm threatening this pawn, and I get really quick to element. Bishop d6, and I'm very quick to castle. Looks good. I played c3. Not bishop d6, of course. You get the piece out. And probably I should castle now, and then play e5, but I played e5 immediately. It's okay, maybe it can't be too bad. He took, and I took with a c knight. For some reason... Today it feels like, you know, taking with a D-Knight is more natural to get this bishop into the game. But at the time, I guess I was more worried about the pawn and being able to protect it. At the end of the day, it didn't really matter because he took an E5 and I took back with a knight. I hit him knight on D3, so he does not have time to castle. Plays bishop to E2. I castle. And... Yeah, per perhaps you should castle now. Still, I like black's position with, you know... Half open F file where I have pressure, you know, have the, have the strong bishops uh, on the diagonals, and you know, the, the knight is ready. So, a, a lot of things going for me here. For some reason, my, my bishops seem to be quite drunk. But okay, nice bishops after a castle, but he doesn't castle, he goes knight f3. Trying to limit my attacking options, and also hitting this pawn, which I now protect. Bishop e3. Here I play a move. Well, the computer doesn't like it. Don't think it's too bad. Queen g6. But it does demonstrate my idea. It takes on e5. But my idea, and this is the first occurrence of this theme that we're talking about. And it's basically the fourth knox queen trap. If he castles, I will take. He takes. I will take with the rook. And at the end of the day, we will play bishop to g4. And the queen is trapped. The bishops do a hell of a job here to cover all the squares. So the fourth knight's queen trap. And this is uh, a recurring theme in this game. So he doesn't castle after queen g6, he takes on e5. I take with the bishop. Now if he castles, I have bishop h3. So he plays bishop f3. Bishop c7. Sort of getting ready to, you know, if he castles, I have this square. Maybe not the best move, but okay. The computer doesn't really dislike it, but I'm not sure if black had anything concrete there. In any case, I mean, black is, is quite comfortable here. To queen d2, I do play bishop f5. The best move. So I'm kind of waiting for him to, you know, decide on which wing he's going to castle. At this point, especially after h4, I thought he's going queen side. And because I thought that, I, I play queen e6. Anticipating castles queenside, when maybe I play d4 and this pawn is a target. My bishop is quite nice. But he surprised me, castle kingside. And now it looks like pretty much a one way street here after uh, bishop h3. 
And yeah, I mean, if he takes it, it's basically game over. Uh, you play queen e2, but that is even more game over after. Rook takes a3, four timer, double x clamp. And again, the fourth knock's queen trap is on display here. Because now the queen on e6 is covering the bishop, and again the bishops are quite strong. No squares for the queen. The queen is lost. So we took with the pawn, but then we kind of get this, you know, put a piece on f3, the Bobby's blockade. Or we i h2, my opponent resigned. You can actually break the blockade with pawn to f4, but then we open up on the light squares. And we block the bishop. If I played queen g6 immediately, he had this move. Where he may be squares, but now it's just mate because he can't defend. So a pretty, yeah, pretty fun game. Yeah, queen d6 was the 21st move, kind of a miniature. Uh, yeah, one of the shortest games I played, you know, against a, an opponent of this caliber. But I thought it was cool, you know, the, uh, the way these themes that we looked at, the fourth knock's queen trap and Bobby's blockade. You know, do check out those videos if you haven't, you know, to get your pattern recognition working better. So I hope that helps. Bye-bye.